So this is one of those videos I was really questioning whether it was worth making or not. But I do want to show you sometimes it is very easy to do things in Home Assistant. A lot of times I'll make videos on how to do the hard things or the complicated things. But I do want to show you the flip side of where it is super easy to do certain things within Home Assistant. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer all of my Home Assistant configuration from my Raspberry Pi over to my Home Assistant Yellow. So let's get started. Before we get started with actually moving the configuration over, let me remind you what the Home Assistant Yellow actually is. This is a device that allows you to run Home Assistant. In fact, it comes pre-installed with Home Assistant on it and allows you to plug and play and get up and running quickly. Comes with a gigabit ethernet port, a Matter compatible Zigbee module, and Matter is the new standard that's coming out that a lot of manufacturers are getting on board with that allows everything to talk to everything else regardless of who makes it and what protocol it's running. They do this, do this with bridges and things, and that's a whole other discussion. It has an M.2 expansion slot, so you can put an SSD hard drive or an AI accelerator or whatever your favorite expansion module is. And it has the Raspberry Pi 4 or Compute Module 4 for power, uh, for computing power, that is. Um, this is a, a crowd supply type um, project, and that's where you can get it at right now. And if we go down here, we can just go through some of the specifications. Again, just to remind you what this uh, Home Assistant Yellow is all about. It has this um, CM4 board to board connector, supports uh, direct boot from NVMe devices, um, compatible with all 32 variants of the CM4. It has wireless, uh, integrated smart home wireless. That means smart home wireless means it's got Zigbee uh, in it with open thread and matter. It does not have, um, the Z-Wave stuff in it. It does have a 2.4 gigahertz radio with transmit power up to 20 dBm. Um, and that's the module you're talking about here. It has an expansion slot for NVMe SSDs. Uh, Google Accelerator does not work with this, by the way, but you can um, use other accelerators. Gigabit Ethernet um, and all these other things that are on here. And this is a kind of a picture of what the board looks like. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take the configuration on my Raspberry Pi. And this is my Raspberry Pi the way it is right now. And this is the thing I play around with a lot and do tests and videos and things with. It is not my production setup, although there would be no reason why I couldn't take my production setup and put it on Home Assist or on the yellow as well. But I do want to just take this, this uh, Raspberry Pi and move it over to the yellow. That way I can start playing with stuff like the Matter Standard on a native device rather than having to do something with the Raspberry Pi. And then I can use the Raspberry Pi for something else. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is you need to create a backup of your setup. And you can, this is going to be, for me, a complete full backup. I recommend that you do a full backup. It's going to bring everything you need across from your, your device that you're running on now over to your Home Assistant Yellow. And then we'll come over here and we'll create this uh, backup pushing the blue button right here. Give it a name. Um, and I'll just say full backup for yellow. And again, full backup, you can add part, uh, password protection if you want to, I'm not going to this time. And then click on create. This may take quite a while, it really just depends on what you are doing, how much stuff is on there. You can see by some of my other backups, it's about 350, 360 meg worth of stuff it's backing up. So while you're waiting for that to back up, why don't you just real quick, hit that subscribe button on my channel, I would really appreciate just pushing that button right down here if you're on the computer or wherever it happens to be on your device. Um, if you want to support me when I do, you can also join the channel. I've got a website, uh, mostlychris.com, where you can go look at kind of write-ups of what I'm doing here on the videos and, you know, whatever else. Uh, but this is going to take a while. You can see that it's already running. And so what we'll do is we'll come back in a few minutes when the backup is complete and we will start with our next step. Once your backup is completed running, then you'll have it listed in this list right here and you'll need to click on it and download the backup. So over here, click on the three dots and download this backup file and it'll put it on your computer or whatever, wherever you store those things. And you'll need this downloaded because what you're going to do is then you're going to upload it to your yellow, your home assistant yellow device. And then that's going to restore it onto the home assistant yellow device, all this configuration that you have here. Now, if you have custom hardware, 
or you're running something out of the ordinary on your Raspberry Pi that isn't on your Home Assistant Blue, you may have some issues with that. So consider when you're moving from one piece of hardware to another piece of hardware, specifically what this stuff or what things you're actually running, because you'll need to make sure that you have compatible devices on your Home Assistant Yellow. Typically, it's not a big issue, but if you don't have specific things on your Yellow that you have on your Pi that are out of the ordinary, some of your functionality may not be there. So just be aware of that. You'll be able to dig in that once you get things moved over to your Home Assistant Yellow from the Pi. So this is still downloading and it's going to be about 340 or 50 meg, actually 345 meg. And once that's done, then we'll be able to move over to the Home Assistant Yellow and be able to upload that to the Yellow. And then it will restore everything on your device. And now you can see that it is completed. So let's go over to my Home Assistant Yellow now. Now I did play with this a little bit when I first got it. I already have an account set up, but it's going to overwrite everything on my Home Assistant Yellow when I do a full restore. This was just play, playground stuff for me when I first got the Yellow. And if you saw my Yellow video, this is what I did when I set up my introductory unboxing video for the Yellow. If you haven't seen that, go check it out as well. It has details on the Yellow itself and a little bit about what I did with it. Okay, so just like we did uh, on the other device, the Raspberry Pi, we're going to go to the backups and we're going to do a restore. So we're navigate to the backups. You can always hit your C key on your keyboard for the command shortcut in a Home Assistant UI. That way it takes you to that screen you just saw. So if I hit C, then I have all these options available to me. All right, so I don't have any backups, of course, on this one, but I am going to restore a backup. So what I need to do is come over here and upload a backup. And this backup is gonna be the one I just downloaded on my device. And it's going to upload it. It'll take as much time as necessary to get from your device you're running, you're storing the backup on over to your Home Assistant Yellow. And boom, just like that, it's already done. So now that it's on my device here, all I have to do is click the box, um, or click the backup rather, and do a restore of the full backup. And it says, are you sure you want to wipe your system and restore this backup? Remember, like I said it a minute ago, if you restore from this backup from your Raspberry Pi on your yellow, it's going to completely wipe everything out. So keep that in mind. And of course, it reminds you. So we're going to restore. And it's going to sit here for a while. Obviously, it's seeing that uh, we've lost a connection already. One of the things that it'll probably do is it will keep the same IP address. So I have an IP address of 157 on this box. So you shouldn't have an IP address conflict on the box. But if you have stuff running on your Raspberry Pi that you want to talk to directly to on your yellow now, you'll have to make sure you go into the network settings and change that. And I will show you that here in just a little bit. So let's let this restore go and then we'll come back here in just a minute whenever it's completed restoring. Okay, so here's a caveat that I just came across. It's been sitting on this screen for quite a long time, but it doesn't mean it's not finished doing its restore. One of the things that you might notice up here, let me see if you can see this, is on this page, this is an HTTP page, which is a not secure page. My Home Assistant Pi that I was running on is actually an SSL enabled device. And so whenever I did the restore from the Pi to the blue, it's not gonna reconnect to it on a non SSL port, which makes it not refresh and do anything here. So what I'm gonna have to do is actually add in HTTPS and then go into my Pi or my Home Assistant Yellow and then connect to it that way. So you'll see, you'll get a certificate error and then I'll be able to proceed to it. This might cause you issues if you don't do this properly uh, or if you don't go and try to do that. So now this is the all the configuration that was on my Raspberry Pi. You can see that kind of here, just a different theme. This is the light theme and this is the dark theme, but everything else is here and up and running. Now, I sat here for a very long time waiting for this thing to actually update properly and then restart, but it had been doing this and had been done for a long time and I was ready to pull the plug and reboot it. And I ran into that issue where I thought it was broken and not working, but it really was. So uh, just, just consider that if you're moving from an HTTPS or an HTTP over to an HTTPS or vice versa, when you do the restore, it's not going to automatically refresh the screen necessarily because it can't get to the proper um, SSL protocol to do that. So it really actually was working. 
Uh, I just didn't know it this whole time. So I've been waiting for a very long time. And in fact, I was going to comment on the fact that the whole the whole longest or the, the longest part of doing all of this is the backup and the restore and just waiting for all of that to complete. So I can't really even tell you how long the restore took. So one thing to keep in mind is if you're running add-ons that require your 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 devices to connect to a certain IP and you migrate everything over, you'll notice that I'm running on a .157 address here. Well, my Pi is running on a .158 IP address. So what I'm going to have to do is move my Pi, either unplug the Pi or move my Pi to a new IP address. Now I want to continue to use this as kind of a test bed, so I'm going to keep the Pi running. But in order to do that, I need to go to networking. So I'll hit the C key on my keyboard, go to networking over here, and I'm going to change the IP uh, v4 address to something else. And I've already picked an address for it. So I'm going to move it to 80, not 80, because I don't have a conflict. And I know I don't have a conflict because I've looked over here on my network settings. So I'm going to move this over to 0 0.80 and I'm going to save it. And if everything goes well, if I look over here, hopefully I'll see that pop up at some point on here. But if you change the IP address, of course, you're going to have to change the IP address up here in your URL. And we'll just see if that actually worked. And it did. So I'm on port our IP address of, of 80 now. Of course, you have to log in and do everything again. So that means that my Pi is now running on a .80 IP address. Same thing goes over here. Now I'm going to change this uh, networking IP address to .158. Now keep in mind though that one of the things that could occur is that your your network setting or your network system, whether your router or your switches or whatever you're running, if you have a MAC address that is associated with that IP address, it may take a minute for all of that networking equipment to update to the new IP. So you may momentarily lose connectivity. So do this when you have time to, to troubleshoot the networking if it doesn't work right. So let me go over to this IP IP v, uh, v4 address. Now it's DHCP right now. I'm going to change it to static. And of course it's set to 157. I'm going to change it to 158. And all of this information was picked up from the DHCP server. So I will leave that the way it is. And of course, if you're changing the IP or gateway addresses, you might lose the connection. I'm going to save it. And it's probably going to disconnect me from that. And then I'm going to go over here to 158 and cross my fingers that it actually did what it was supposed to. And let's see if it actually, if this is the yellow, um, let's go to hardware because I don't know how to tell if it's the yellow. Okay. So it is the home assistant yellow on 158. So I now have moved this over to 158. And if I go over to my Unify dashboard here, if I, I hope I can see 80, there's 80 now. And settings, use fix. So I'm gonna have it at the um, uh, on the router itself set the IP address and 158 should be the same way. Uh, there's 158, that is the yellows uh, information there. And it's the same. Okay, so now both of these are on different IP addresses in the Home Assistant configuration. And now I'm running the yellow on here and there's some updates available for it as well this is because the pi was running an older version um nine six and now it's ready for nine seven so now my yellow is actually running uh the configuration that was on my home uh, raspberry pi so you could see how easy that was i know like i said at the beginning this almost wasn't worth a video but i did want to show you that there what was there three steps back up your your raspberry pi download the backup file, upload the, the backup file to yellow and click restore. And now you're up and running. That's how simple it is. Let's call it four steps, right? So within four steps, you're going from your Raspberry Pi over to your home assistant yellow. And okay, let's add two more steps. You're changing the IP address on your Pi and you're changing the IP address on your yellow. You don't actually have to do that unless you have devices on your network that are talking back to your, you know, your home assistant instances. In my case, I am actually running AdGuard. So with AdGuard, I need to be able to um, talk back to a specific IP address for DNS resolution. So I do have to have that up and running and I do have to have it on the right IP address. Okay, so super simple. Move from a Pi to the, to the yellow. And if you wanna know more about the yellow, again, watch my video on the unboxing of the yellow. 
Uh, it is a ready to go plug and play home assistant device that'll get you basic home assistant um, operation running on your smart home network. And it has the Zigbee module that is matter um, compliant, matter ready, so that you can start using the matter stuff once more of that gets integrated into home assistant and into all the devices that are out there in the, the world that are starting to use this matter uh, standard. All right, let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. Hit me up on Discord if you have any questions as well. Um, I really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Also hit the bell icon if you want to get notified whenever I release new videos. And once again, we will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.